Hello, today we will see how to add and edit aircraft data. Aircraft information is found in Settings Fleet. All added aircraft are visible on this list. To add a new one, we click Add New Aircraft and fill in the aircraft information. Remember, only admins and groups with granted access can change fleet settings. OK, the fields with the star are compulsory. We select the aircraft type from the list available. The short name will fill in automatically. The registration number. Please remember that if you ever change the registration number, all the past flights will be affected. To avoid it, it's better to deactivate the aircraft by marking it as not used or deleted and adding a new one. Then you can go and fill in all the other fields. The more you fill in, the better, as this information works as a source for many functions in Leon. Here we have a minimum cockpit and cabin crew, rest facility if applicable, capacity, home base, ICAO is a general ICAO home base that this aircraft is assigned to and Leon home base can be defined in general settings in case you operate from more than one branch. This way you assign the aircraft to the base of its operation within Leon. Since we are in the settings, you can see the default weight and fuel units are defined here. These are set per operator, which means it's for the whole fleet. However, a setting for a particular aircraft will override the general settings. The maximum takeoff weight. Leon will give you a suggestion from our database, however, make sure it is correct for your actual model, as the pricing scheme is based on this weight. Operator ICAO code is your company's registered ICAO code, which is necessary if you are integrated with Eurocontrol in Leon. The codes will have to match in Leon and in Eurocontrol for the integration to work. The Ops tab refers to settings within the Ops panel. Table view color is the color here. No handling needed at home base will automatically set the handling status to not applicable in the checklist when the flight involves a home base airport. Default flight type and flight rule refer to the flight tab in the Ops panel so that you don't have to select it with each new flight, but you can of course edit those if necessary. The noise and rescue and firefighting category are just for your information here. Minimum runway length needs to be specified so that Leon can issue a warning if we had a fly to an airport with a shorter runway than required. The fuel values will also issue a warning if the data in journey log is entered incorrectly. Default flight number will fill in the flight number field when adding a flight on this aircraft and increase by 1 will make the flight number higher by 1 with each following flight given that the default one ends in a digit. So if it's set to ABC1 and this is ticked, each following flight will have a number higher by 1. So ABC2, ABC3 and so on. The note entered here will appear on the trip sheet. The sales tab refers to the sales panel. Here you can set the default price list for this aircraft. That can be changed on the actual quote, but the default one will be set automatically. These are set in the fees section. For more information, please go watch the sales panel webinar linked above and down in the description. UK APD class is a class of calculating the UK APD tax for this aircraft when creating quotes in the sales panel. The pictures that are uploaded here can be later used on the sales documents in the document manager. Performance details should be filled in as well. They will allow for automatic calculations of the flight time when adding new flights as well as issue warnings if the values are exceeded. So, for example, if we try to add flights with less than, in this case, 60 minutes on the ground in between the flights, Leon will warn us. The speed profiles help to calculate the time of arrival and we insert them by assigning certain speed to different time stages of the flight. 
So for example, for the first hour of the flight, it goes 300 knots, then 400 from this hour on. You can add as many as you need. There is a simple calculation. The advanced one includes also the IFR root factor, which is useful on short haul flights, giving a more accurate arrival time. These are not compulsory, but very useful. Here at the top, we have the status. Make sure this is always set correctly because the status active will include this aircraft in the monthly invoice even if it's not marked for a full calendar month. The status not used is for when the aircraft is not in operation but you need its data to be visible in the system. And deleted is when the aircraft leaves your fleet and its data is hidden throughout the system. It is not possible to remove the aircraft from the system permanently. If the aircraft is an ACME, you can mark it here. The first ACME aircraft is free of charge. Once we are happy with the settings, we save the changes and the aircraft is added. Now we need to assign the positions available for this aircraft type. We go to settings, aircraft crew positions and set the crew positions for this aircraft type. It only has to be done once for each type in our fleet. We select the type in the filter, then select the positions we use for this type and the ones to be available by default on every flight. And we do that for each group. Ok, and now we are able to add new flights on this aircraft in our schedule. One additional thing worth mentioning in terms of setting up aircraft is the special types available in the system. If we go back to the fleet settings, we can see there's a tab called Virtual Fleet. In here we can create virtual aircraft that will help us to create a draft schedule before making a real one. These exclude the regular aircraft data and the FTL calculations are not performed for these on the schedule. To add one we click new aircraft and fill in the information. These aircraft are free of charge. Additionally there are two types of aircraft that work for different purposes than regular fleet. These are ground and XCOM. The type ground is used when we want to assign endorsements in the system for the ground staff. Endorsements are assigned per aircraft type, so this one is solely for this purpose. And the other one is XCOM, which stands for external companies. So if your crew flies outside of your company, their schedule and flight time calculations can be tracked. These two are also free of charge. Ok, so that's it for the fleet setup, hopefully it will help you to create your aircraft database. If you have any questions, please feel free to visit our online manual or contact our support team.